Okay, let's talk about a topic that you absolutely need to understand in order to uh, do well in geometry and on other type of uh, uh, situations outside of geometry like standardized tests. Okay, so this topic, okay, and this topic has to do specifically with these types of triangles. So we have a triangle here. It has a 60 degree, a 30 degrees, and this is 90. And this one has 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and this is 90. So we need to know how to deal specifically with these two types of triangles. So uh, that's a pretty good clue for those of you out there to think about this. And, you know, hopefully you're like, yeah, I know what to do with these type of triangles. And uh, that's great. But if you're like, no, I don't really need to... Um, you know, know these type of triangles because I know they're right triangles. So with right triangles, I can just use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And uh, that is good as well. However, uh, oftentimes you cannot use this uh, theorem. It's not enough given the information for these particular problems. You might need some trigonometry, but, you know, if you don't, uh, if we can't use the Pythagorean theorem, if we can't use trigonometry, then we can use these special properties of the 30, 60, 90 and 45, 45, 90 uh, degree triangle. So we're going to get into this in just one second. It's very, very important for those of you that are, uh, you know, whether you're taking geometry or not, you just got to know this. Okay, so we're going to get into this again in uh, just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tab of Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses, uh, all the big courses, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, college algebra. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here soon. Uh, but I have a ton of other type of courses, uh, test preparation courses. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, Accuplace or Alex, uh, teacher certification, nursing entrance. It doesn't make a difference. There's a ton of different tests that are very, very important for people's goals, Okay, whether it's you know to get into a particular pro uh, program, uh, get a certification. So a lot of people study mathematics, have to study math because that's on their you know particular exam they're facing. So I recognize that. I have very comprehensive, uh, excellent test preparation math courses. So you can check out my full catalog. Just go to my website. Hopefully I have what uh, you are studying. If I don't, drop me a line in my contact form and I'll help you out the best I can. Also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously if you're just struggling in math class, I can help you out. But uh, for those of you, uh, you know, that are struggling in any mathematics or studying math, you just need to know how important it is to take notes. Now, I call this my golden rule of mathematics over decades of teaching math. One thing is apparent to me. Those students who take great math notes almost always end up with great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who are just not into taking notes, who rather do other stuff, or just distracted. You know, I get it. You know, there's so much information coming at us, you know, all the time, and having our cell phones even makes it that much worse, all right? So the only way you're going to remain focused on uh, the instruction that's coming your way from your teacher is to be engaged in an activity that forces you to stay focused, and that's note-taking, okay? Just believe me on this one. I've been doing this for a long, long time. If you improve your notes, everything else is going to get better for you in terms of mathematics. But, uh, you know, as you're doing that, it is, you know, something that requires effort. It is a skill or slash art form, if you will, um, to take great math notes. And it's something you have to practice. Over time, you'll get better at it. But as you are getting better at it, you still need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, these two triangles. And we classify these as special right triangles. Okay, so let's talk about special right triangles. But uh, before we do that, let's just look at any old triangle like this, any old right triangle. So let's say I had a right triangle, and this was 3, and this was 4. Again, I said, find the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, now in this particular situation, we have uh, this length and this length. So we have two of the three missing sides. We know it's the right triangle, so I could simply go ahead and uh, use the Pythagorean theorem. 
Okay, and you would go ahead and this would be 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to c squared. And then we would end up with 9 plus uh, 16 is equal to c squared. c squared is this side. And th uh, by the way, this is just a quick review on the Pythagorean theorem. If you really need to, uh, you know, review this or learn this, just check out, um, I have tons of videos on this in my geometry playlist. You can learn all about the Pythagorean there. But we have 9 plus 16 is 25 is equal to c squared. I take the square root of both sides, and c is equal to 5. So the missing length of this particular triangle is 5. So pretty straightforward. So when we have a right triangle, you want to be thinking Pythagorean theorem. Okay. However, what happens if uh, I don't have two uh, lengths? Okay. So let's say it's this situation, right? And I'm like, hmm, okay, well, what's going on here? Well, here you're stuck. You can't do anything. Okay, because we don't have enough information. I just have this side and this length. Okay, I need some additional information. Now, if you had, let's say this uh, angle, let's say this angle was 20 degrees, then you could use trigonometry. Okay, some basic trigonometry that involves the sine, cosine, and tangent to figure this out. Okay, now this is, again, uh, uh, involves trigonometric ratios and might be, uh, be beyond the scope of what you're studying right now, but this is what would be required, okay? You would need trigonometry, okay? However, there are triangles where we don't have to use trigonometry, and, uh, and of course, we can't use the Pythagorean theorem because we don't have two sides here, or we just have an angle. So those situations are these uh, special right triangles, and you need to know these rules, okay? So when you encounter a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90, okay, you need to know these rules. So let's go ahead and, and uh, take a look at the 30, 60, 90 first. All right, so let's say this side here is x. Let's call it x equals 2, and I want to find these remaining two sides, right? Well, again, I have one side, I have some angles. I know it's a right triangle, so it's not enough information for me, use, for me to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I can't do that. All right, so uh, I would need some trigonometry. Mm, yeah, but I don't want to be using sine, cosine, and tangent again. So what we have is some basic, um, like a basic uh, kind of rule here, all right? And in when you have a 30, 60, 90, the sides of the, of the triangle, of a 30, 60, 90 triangle will always be in this proportion. So here is uh, how it goes, all right? If this side is x, this the hypotenuse will always be 2x, okay? So it's the double the smallest side. So this is the smallest side. So this hypotenuse, the longest side, will be double the smallest side. So that's really easy. That's 2 times 2 or 4. So you're like, oh, wow, that's super easy. Now I, got, now I have two lengths. Now, technically, you could now go and use a Pythagorean theorem, but there's no need to do that, okay? This middle length okay not the uh, the not the shortest not the longest but this middle one this one right right here is going to be x times the square root of three so whatever this value is here it's got this is going to be this is two in this particular problem so we just take that two and we multiply it by the square root of three and that's what this is i mean easy as one two three now uh, there's a lot more sophisticated kind of problems that you could uh, do i could give you this length of a 30 60 90 and then you would have to go and determine that, and then you could determine this. Or I could give you uh, the hypotenuse. Actually, let's do another quick problem here, and let's see if you can remember all of this. And we'll kind of reverse engineer the solution. So let's say this is 10, all right? I'm give, I give you this problem, and I want you to know, I want you to go ahead and, and figure out what these uh, sides are. So how could I approach that? Well, if the hypotenuse is 10, I know the smallest side is going to be half of that. So that's 10 divided by 2, or 5. I'm like, okay, so now I know this one. I know that this side is going to be, whatever this side is, 5 times the square root of 3, and I'm done. 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so that's the beauty of knowing about these special right triangles. These come up all the time. Believe me when I tell you, you need to know how to deal with 30, 60, 90 right triangles. And by the way, you may not see them, you know, uh, like this. You might see it kind of this way. You might see it like so, okay, 
All right, I'm just kind of sketching. Does this be our 30? And this would be our 60, and this is our 90. So in that case, this is x. This would be 2x, and this is x times the square root of 3. Okay, so now let's go to our 45, 45, um, 90 situation. This is quite easy. This one here, because uh, when you have a 45, 45, whatever this side is right here, this is like a square, and it's diagonal. This side is also x. So if this is 2... This side is also 2. I mean, it's pretty easy, right? <laughs> so uh, now here you would say, okay, well, I have enough information to go ahead and figure out the hypotenuse. I could use the Pythagorean theorem. Yes, you could. But if you have a 45-45, all you need to know is that this side will be x times the square root of 2. All right, so that would be 2 square root of 2 is our answer. You know, you don't want to go ahead and do this 2 squared plus 2 squared is equal to c squared. So this is 4 plus 4, right? That's c squared. And that would be 8 equals c squared. We take the square root of both sides. So I get c is equal to the square root of 8. Let's see how your algebra is. All right, we can go down here. Take the square root of 8. That factors as a square root of 4 times 2 or square root of 4 times the square root of 2, or 2 square root of 2. Look at all that work. If I just knew the, the rule, and I take this side and a 45, 45, and multiply it by uh, square root of 2, I just I'm gonna write the answer, okay? So you're going to encounter, again, 45, 45, 90s, 30, 60, 90s, this is going to be something you will see, okay? You'll see it on some exam, and you certainly need to know this in geometry, okay? But, uh, you know, not to minimize the Pythagorean theorem and basic right uh, triangle uh, trigonometry, you got to know that as well. But again, uh, what we're dealing with here is special right triangles. you got to know special right triangles. And hopefully, okay, uh, this video was a good introduction to them and a good review. Um, like anything, you want to practice more sophisticated problems. I can make more challenging problems. But if you just keep those proportions in mind, you're going to do just fine. Okay, so if this video helped you out in some way, if you enjoyed this video, if you were like, yeah, that was you know, it was worth watching, I learned something, then please consider smashing that like button. That always helps me out. And uh, also, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time, have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized in basic to advanced mathematics. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable, clear and understandable way. My job, you know, my passion is to get you to you know, understand math. You know, if you're if you're struggling with math, if, you know, typically people don't like math because they're frustrated with it. They're having a difficult time learning. If you learn things, right, and it, it doesn't have to be like torture, you know, you're like, okay, I get this. If you have to study the, this topic, okay, let's try to make it, you know, uh, you know, in a way that's not terrible, <laughs> you know, so in a way that you're, okay, I'm learning, I can do this. Let me learn the math that I need to learn to get me to my goals. Okay, so that's that's how I kind of uh, view things. Not everyone's going to want to be a mathematician, engineer. I get that, but guess what? Uh, many of you, um, if you're studying, if you're looking at this video, you need to learn math to get where you want to go. Whatever goal, maybe it's passing one of those tests I was talking about, or placing into college, or whatever the case might be, or just getting a good grade in your current math class. Right? You got to learn to. Um, Learn mathematics together. There's only one way to, to learn that, and that is to, you know, have a good attitude and work hard. Okay, so again, uh, if you wanted more additional information on all this stuff, just check out my videos in my various playlists on my channel. Uh, but, you know, my best work will always be in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.